St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Cecile Mascaro from Windsor, Ontario, and Scott and Connie McKenzie from Canmore, Alberta. It is offered for their special intentions and those of their extended families. Also, in memory of Gordon Mascaro and in thanksgiving for the televised daily Mass, which he cherished. For Joseph Arsenault and his family, for Frank and Mary Ellen Therian and their family from Tecumseh, Ontario, and in memory of Mary Ellen's mother, Josie Thompson, who passed away peacefully shortly after viewing the daily Mass. Mrs. Mascaro and her daughter Connie are here with us today. We welcome you and we thank you for this gift. The Lord be with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In Christ also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, you were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Full of the 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the crowd had gathered by the thousands so that they trampled on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, that is, their hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and whatever you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Do not be afraid. Fear is not only our deepest instinct, it is generally one of our constant companions in life. We fear all kinds of things. We harbor the fear of losing our job. We fear not being wanted. We fear getting old. We fear what other people will think. We fear failure. We fear that our marriage is faltering. We fear that we may not get the good grades at school. We fear diseases like cancer and AIDS. We fear death, or at least we fear the process of dying. We fear crime in our neighborhood. We fear being unable to make ends meet. We are afraid of the unknown. Fear. Fear. Have you ever noticed how many stories in the Bible are about fear? Luke tells us that the story of Jesus' conception begins with an angel saying to Mary, Fear not. At Jesus' birth in the fields, we're told the glory of the Lord shone all around the shepherds. They were terrified. 
And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you news of great joy. And when Joseph learns through a dream of an impending persecution and is advised to flee to Egypt, the angel repeats the message, Do not be afraid, Joseph. While Jesus slept in the midst of a storm at sea, the terrified apostles anxiously accused Jesus of not caring about their plight. And Jesus answered, Why are you frightened? How is it that you have no faith? And then he calmed the sea. The irony, of course, is that even Jesus' power to calm the sea frightened the disciples. When Jesus took three apostles up the mount, his face was transfigured, reflecting a radiant, blinding light. The disciples were told, fell on their feet, faces over, fell on their faces, uh, overcome with fear. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. And in today's gospel from Luke, Jesus reminds us, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Do not be afraid. In addition to these words of encouragement in the sacred scriptures, God has also given us the gift of faith. St. Paul reminds us that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. If we feel truly assured in one way or another, fear disappears and the unknown ceases to be threatening. Fear can only exist where our thoughts keep us unsure of ourselves or unsure of the world around us. With faith, we see ourselves as miraculous beings, intelligent, resourceful, and more than equipped by a loving God to meet our destiny in life or any other challenge life might throw our way. The world certainly has its problems, but it is still a beautiful place with wonderful opportunities and populated with significant numbers of caring and loving people. The gift of faith frees us from fear. And we have the words of encouragement in the scriptures. Francois Mariac, the brilliant Nobel Prize winning French author, was a practicing Roman Catholic, but it was not until the later years of life that he really found Christ. He wrote, and I conclude with this quotation, Christ became the love of the evening of my life. Christ became the only one who could bring me any comfort in the frog pond of current events. Christ didn't answer my intellectual questions laden with despair. What he did was simply give himself to me. If I were to give from a human point of view the reason for my fidelity to Christ in this, the evening of my life, I would say it was his quieting of the radical fear within me. In union with those who have gone before us and now see God face to face, let us pray for the living and the dead. That the church bring Christ's healing and compassion to broken hearts, we pray to the Lord. That nations, large and small, renounce the ways of death and earnestly work for peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that members of this assembly 
and all our viewers strive for holiness in all things, we pray to the Lord. That our brothers and sisters who have died welcome us one day into God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Compassionate God, you hear the cry of the poor. Help us to see you in every face and turn our hearts to your service in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of this. Of, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share some sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to do what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Amen. Our thanks to Cecile Mascaro from Windsor, Ontario, and Scott and Connie McKenzie from Canmore, Alberta. It's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep daily Mass on television, and you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation.